Welcome to Dev Jams. This is where we talk with developers who are doing innovative, inspiring, interesting things with code and typically doing it with images and videos, typically also with Cloudinary powering much of the development efforts that they are taking. My name is Sam Brace. I am the Senior Director of Customer Education and Community at Cloudinary. And I am so excited for this episode because in this episode, we're looking inside rather than outside. We're talking to someone, Anthony, who is one of our developer support engineers who has built an amazing project, being able to link Blender, which is, for those that aren't tied to the 3D modeling space, one of the most ubiquitously used pieces of software when it comes to be able to create 3D models and being able to use those in many different types of applications, such as movies, gaming. But he's found a way to take those three d models and easily export them from Blender over to Cloudinary so you can use them for web and mobile types of purposes, such as turning them into images, being able to display those in product galleries, and even more. So we're very, very excited to be talking to Anthony about the work that he's done to be able to really bring in a lot of use cases that are in the 3D space and bring those into web delivery and product gallery purposes for all sorts of types of users and buyers. Join with me for every single one of these episodes is Jen Brisman. And Jen is a technical curriculum engineer here at Cloudinary. So if you've ever experienced any of the Cloudinary Academy courses and the workshops that we put out, as well, of course, as the podcast that you are listening to right now, you have probably gone through something that Jen has helped to create. So we're very, very happy to have Jen here as our co-host for this episode. So Jen, welcome to the episode. Hey, happy to be here. So Jen, a little bit of your personal take on this. Why are you excited to be talking to Anthony here today? Well, uh, in addition to the fact that Anthony is one of my friends at Cloudinary, um, I'm happy to have him on here because we haven't had uh, an episode focusing on 3D before, and this feels like a new concept, and I know I've learned a lot just getting ready for this episode, so I'm just excited for the topic in general. Excellent. I am too, and you're absolutely right. This is one of the first times you've really broached 3D as a concept within this podcast, so I think it's for anybody that's really trying to understand what the space is about, being, or maybe you already do know what the space is about and maybe are kind of understanding how Cloudinary plays in this space. This is definitely a good primer for both of those use cases. So excellent, excellent point, Jen. Now, before we bring in our friend Anthony, we do want to indicate that this is a Dev Jams episode, as you know, but this is a Dev Jams episode that, of course, is one of many. We have plenty of episodes, including ones that have to do with topics about our various SDKs, our APIs, ways that people have been able to build lots of types of integrations with certain programs or plugins. And all of these are available at cloudinary.com slash podcasts. So take the time to look through all of the various libraries. We literally have years of content available for you within this overall space. And I will also say that the conversations about these episodes are absolutely able to be had at our overall Cloudinary community. So that's going to be at community.cloudinary.com. And this is where you can go and talk with other Cloudinary users, if you happen to be one yourself, and hopefully you are, to be able to have them answering questions about things that they've come across in their own projects, maybe even dealing with 3D. So definitely some places to go before we start our overall conversation in case you're interested in trying to see, is this the first time that Sam and Jen have talked about development topics with developers? <laughs> Not quite. So. Let's go in and bring in our friend Anthony and start talking about all things 3D. So, Anthony, welcome to the program. Well, uh, hi, Sam. Hi, Jen. Uh, thank you for having me. Wonderful. So, Anthony, I know the amazingness that you are. So, tell us a little bit about that, though. Like, like tell us about what do you do at Cloudinary? How did you come to Cloudinary? Um, the work that you do. Yes. Um, so, um, I joined Cloudinary a little bit uh, over a year ago, um, almost two years now. Um, but uh, I am a developer support where uh, the day-to-day -day task is to find solutions for uh, our enterprise customers as well as the pre-tier uh, customers. Um, we, we are heavily API first um, SaaS product. So um, I enjoy it every day. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, that's basically the gist of it. Uh, we do have a lot of freedom in terms of 
um, what we can do and building internal tools uh, within the company. Uh, yeah. And so then one thing that, of course, when you're working with customers globally, you're working with customers that have unique codes. We work with many different SDKs and frameworks and languages. You've probably encountered some that started the efforts of this overall project, which was being able to start working more in the 3D space. Now, how did this ultimately come about? Like, was this a support ticket? Was this a customer inquiry? Was this just your own imagination trying to figure out how to connect Cloudinary to Blender? What, what anticipated this project? Uh, yes, it's a little bit of both. Um, we have had uh, quite a few tickets uh, regarding about uh, 3D inquiries. Um, I do have a little bit of, um, you know, um, uh, thing in me that I would like to see what the treaty is all about. Uh, plus, I do have a 70-year-old son that loves Roblox and Minecraft. So, I would, you know, I showed him what is the Roblox studio. So instead of him playing just the Roblox, I make sure that he creates stuff. So that's one of the things that, you know, that drives me into, uh, you know, creating a 3D model. Absolutely. And, and that's, it's nice that you'll be able to kind of blend things that you're finding professionally, personally, and being able to benefit from this. So I'd love to know more about Blender. So tell me about this overall program. For those that aren't familiar with it, I'm sure those that are tied to the 3D space are like, yeah, you're telling us about something we already know about. <laughs> but, but for those that don't know, what, what is Blender? And also, why did you decide to start taking the efforts for building your plugin with this particular software? Um, like what you mentioned earlier, uh, Blender is a ubiquitous program for 3D. Um, it's free and open source. Um, they have stride an enormous amount of improvements in the last couple of years since, you know, uh, version 2.8. Now they are in uh, version version 3 or above. Um, but um, I find it appealing that uh, it's uh, royalty free. Um, and it's very easy to, uh, to create an integration with Blender. And it's even more easier to create integration with Cloudinary. So uh, that's what brings me to you know, creating uh, an integration with, uh, with Blender and Cloudinary. But uh, Blender, in essence, is a 3D modeling uh, application. It has a shading application. Um, it has a video editing capability. Um, you can do animation on it. So it's really a, a wholesome, a lot of different kinds of uh, 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 features in just one application. So it's really, really awesome. And I think what was smart about the what you've done is that from what I know and from what you just said is that Blender is used by many people within the 3D modeling creation space. So if there is a place to build a plugin to help the most amount of users, it seems like Blender was just a natural choice. Absolutely. I agree with that statement. Um, like what I said, um, it's a free and open source. So, you know, you, you as a student, you didn't have to, you know, uh, go in a way to just um, download a pirated version of a software. You have it for free, <laughs> basically. So. Exactly. Which, which is good. It's absolutely yeah, good. It, exactly. Yeah. So tell me about what the, the, the goal is for the plugin. So if I understand it correctly, it's where you create something in Blender, some type of 3D object that you want to have. And then what does your plugin do with that object at that point? Yeah, so the, the plugin in itself would uh, eliminate the hassle of the 3D modeler didn't have to go through the file system to, uh, to bring about all the necessary pieces that what makes the 3D model it is. Uh, for example, he didn't have to find and look for where is the, uh, the, the textures, uh, you know, the GLTF file, the bin file, in order to package it into a zip file and then upload it to a uh, you know, cloud storage um, um, application, right? Um, so this, this Cloudinary exporter will do it for you. Um, 
so it take I believe it takes away a lot of uh, uh, error prone steps, and it just push it to Cloudinary directly the whole scene, uh, including the animation. Excellent, excellent. Jen, what what questions do you do? Is there anything you have for for Anthony before we pop over his to his screen and have us to walk us through this? I guess the thing that I was wondering is, was there a real pain point that this was solving for, or were you just thinking, I'd like to take a bunch of things and make it happen all at once? Was there were there errors that you were seeing that you were trying to get ahead of, or you were just trying to, in general, make a convenient? Co um, correct, correct. Um, so if you uh, go over some of the steps that we have uh, in Cloudinary in order for us to upload a 3D, you need to be able to package uh, certain files within the 3D object that necessary in order to display the correct texture, you know, uh, whatever that 3D model consists of. And, and I felt like if this is not done correctly, it's error prone. I, I know in my personal experience, I have quite struggled, you know, where in the hierarchy are we placing those files? Uh, stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's pop over and see the functionality demonstration of what you've built. So everything that we've talked about, it's real. Let's see it. How does it work? Cool. Um, can you guys see my screen? Absolutely. Okay. So here we have Blender. Um, let's say that I'm working on a 3D uh, object like this uh, Chuck Taylor, uh, very classic Chuck Taylor uh, converse. Um, so I. Let's say that I created a, an animation to display the product, to rotate the product. So <clears throat> easy enough, um, if you have installed the plugin, which is um, included, you know, the steps is included in my, in my repo, um, uh, that will give you a Cloudinary uh, panel. And um, you just fill up a couple of, uh, a, a few fields like, the cloud name, the API key, the upload preset, uh, the public ID, and the preferred tags that you want. Um, then if I push the upload button, what we should be able to see here, uh, it takes a minute because this is a high quality 3D, uh, really high resolution 3D object. Absolutely. Um, here in the info, info window panel, um, you can see that we got the response from uh, the Cloudinary API. Um, it's saying here that this is now in, has the public ID of Blender slash uh, Chuck Taylor uh, underscore uh, DevJam and all the other information here, such as the secure URL and the URL. Um, now, if we hop over to, um, so what, I guess I'm jumping ahead, way too ahead. So what it did is it zipped the, the necessary file into a single file and it upload that to Cloudinary. So and then, so at that point, so we can see that it's, so now everything that's there, so as you said, all the texture files, all the things that make up this, it's all zipped together. It's all been delivered Correct. into Cloudinary at this point. And then at that point, then it's an asset. So Correct. before we jump into the code that you're showing here on the GitHub, I'd love for you to pop over to your management console here sure. and be able to just show like, hey, it's real, <laughs> it's there. <laughs> um, okay, yes. there it is. Okay, so there we can is. see Chuck Taylor Dev Jams, and we can see that it has an asset type of an image. Right. And it has it's an also a GLTZ. So, mm -hmm. it, so it unzips as it comes through, if I understand that. Correct, yes. So it recognized it's a GLT app format. Uh, that's the format that I chose because it's a royalty-free uh, format and it's well supported by Cloudinary. Um, so from a dev support perspective, I love the format, the fact that we can go in and dig into what makes a GLT app format is. Well, um, of course, I think we all are aware that this is not a web-friendly format. I mean, I know you're showing this in a web browser right now, but GLTF, GLTZ, 3D formats are not web-friendly by design. 
So, cool. but from what I, I know, you could easily make this web friendly thanks to Cloudinary now. Yes. Uh, so, you, so you can display your 3D uh, objects uh, using the product gallery widget as well as the uh, AR view. I believe that we do have an AR view uh, widget. When what you can that? also change it into an, any type of image, right? Like, so you Correct. can take, yes. you make it a PNG, a GIF, yeah. a JPEG, whatever you need it to be um, just from there. Yeah. So if I, I copied the, uh, the URL just by clicking this copy URL uh, icon. And now I can, what I can do is I can use one of the uh, formatting uh, uh, transformation. Uh, now, mind you that this is a very high uh, resolution image. That's why, and this is the first time that we're uh, generating it. That's why um, now that we do have um, the, the PNG format of that 3D model. Yeah, and there's so, there's so many different types of transformations you can add to this, of course, too, because like we have an effect called camera, so E underscore camera, and we'll show that later in this episode, but it's where if you wanted to add a specific angle or a specific type of shot, then it allows for you to do that, where like let's say that you were trying to show the soul of the converse, and you said that's what people want to see, or maybe it's the, the way it would look from the front rather than the side. You can play with those different angles, but still have it be completely web-friendly. So you can be able to take that 3D model, use stills inside of a product gallery. And then even on top of that, as you said, you can display the 3D model by itself with our product gallery as well. So it's, there's lots of cool things that you're able to do here, but pretty fast, right. pretty seamless. Yes. So how did you make it all happen? So this is probably a good chance for us to take a look at the code. Um, and I think one thing that we were talking about yesterday that was very exciting was the fact that you wrote this all in Python, which of course is a language that many people use. Correct. Yes, this is uh, pure Python. Um, I just basically uh, use Blender uh, class inheritance. Um, so if we uh, go to the repo, um, it's just a one pile of Python code. Uh, it's 241 lines. I uh, couldn't get easier than that, I guess. <laughs> um, so as many Python uh, scripts, it starts with the, uh, the main statement, I guess, uh, here. So it jumps into register. So this is the uh, register uh, uh, function. Uh, what it'll do is... Uh, it will go through, it will loop through the array of classes that I define up above, right? Uh, so I do have the uh, cloud and error property uh, class, the, the panel and the operator, and it will register it to the Blender uh, environment. Um, it's uh, under utils and register class. And it will also register um, my CLD props or property that I custom uh, define. So if we go up to the code, so this is the CLD property or the Cloudinary property uh, where I define the cloud name, API key, uh, upload presets, uh, public ID, uh, and tags. And that in turn um, gets used in the panel. So that that panel is what creates the uh, the UI that you saw earlier. Um, so when I inherited the uh, the Blender type panel uh, class, um, and I define the draw, it will get called in the Blender and it will uh, render that, uh, that panel with, with the uh, API key, you know, the, the layout the, or the fields in that panel. And the upload button that you see down below, uh, what I did is I call the uh, layout operator uh, function and I use the Cloudinary operator ID. Uh, this Cloudinary operator ID is defined over 
here under the class Cloudinary Operator. Got it. So that label, the BL underscore label, that's what gets uh, labeled in the button. Now, one thing that I'm seeing here, cause like if you've used Cloudinary before or you've listened to anything that we've put out before, we're always talking about cloud name, API key, and API secret as the overall environment variables that you need to pass to be able to link Cloudinary to, let's say, your AP, like, you know, essentially to your development environment or to a program or a plugin. But I'm seeing there's no API secret here. So how does that work? And also, why did you maybe get around that? Yes. Um, so w what I defined here is an upload preset with unsigned upload. Um, my thought process to this is that um, let's say that I am a 3D modeler um, um, that I work in as a freelance or agency, um, and they have subcontracted, you know, an enterprise customer, a well-known brand subcontracted a uh, a 3D artist to create a 3D model and. This is one way for them to ask the 3D modeler to upload the 3D model that he, he or she created uh, to their Cloudinary uh, account without giving out the API secret. So unsigned, unsigned upload will allow our customer to let an upload to their account without giving out the API secret. I think that's huge. I mean, it, it's it's something where that's a real use case where if you yeah. have a team that's creating 3D content and you need them to just be able to quickly get things into their cloud into your cloud native account, you don't need to give them a user seat because they aren't going to be needing to upload it through the the DAM interface or through a, the user interface by any means. But it's just simply where we need to be able to pass it from their program of choice. And as we said, Blender is probably what they'll be using. If not, they're at least familiar with it, probably, if they're in the 3D space. So it, I think this was smart. I think it was really, really smart to do oh, that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, um, so the, the plugin also allows you to tag the 3D model, which, um, you know, on the receiving end, if you're the, if you're the account owner uh, in Cloudinary, you should be able to see or you should be able to search with the search tag. Well, let, let's see that, because like, uh, you, you did tag something. We, we uploaded yeah. something. So is there a way we can pop over and take a look at that? Sure. Um, here, uh, this is the 3D model that we just uploaded. Um, you can navigate to metadata data, uh, icon, and you can see the three tags that we uh, defined. So if we head back to Blender real quick, uh, that matches our tags. And then if, if I know something about Cloudinary, I know that we have awesome search capabilities. So that's where then if you need to find things like this through Correct. our search API or through the management console and have it where it's showing it through the search, you could easily pull up everything that has, let's say, Chuck Taylor or Red Shoe, and it could be images, videos, or files like this. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's do a quick demo. There we go. Dev Jam. There we go. Yep. Nice and simple. Yeah, and this is a really important feature because with e-commerce customers, they're, they have a lot of assets that they're working with and tagging is really important. And of course, for 3D, that goes right into the product gallery. And this is, this is an important use case. So I can't imagine without the tags, it would be nearly as helpful um, of, of a product that you've built. So awesome work right. there. Thank you. The other thing I want to unpackage here is the upload preset, because as we mentioned, that's one of the ways that you're able to avoid having to do with the API secret details because it's an unsigned upload preset. But is there a way that we could take a look at that inside of your console and explain like how that's working within sure. this overall upload? Okay, let's go to the settings. And as you can see, so he, all of our upload presets, as Anthony is going to be showing, they're going to be inside of the settings section of your system. And then all you'll have to go do is go to the upload section, and then I'll show you all of the presets you've created, including the one that Anthony's going to show here.
Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. You okay. It's fine. Okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go to the upload preset. Um, I believe I named it uh, Blender 3D. Okay. There we go. So if we come in there. And this is how I define an unsigned upload. So really, it's just that simple. So it's where it's, you've defined the name, you said that you want it to be there. And when I looked at it, I know that we we can analyze things quickly because we work at Cloudinary, but it's where there's not much else that you've added to this. It's strictly saying, give it a name, state it as unsigned, and then you can pass it through. And that is indicating that you, as long as you have the right API key in cloud, then it knows that you're probably authorized to use that upload preset. Correct. And the only thing that I added is just where to upload it, you know, what folder. So um, they could be organized that way as well. So, yeah, and absolutely. How are you allowing people to um, define public IDs? I noticed that you didn't define that in the upload preset. So in Blender, is there a field for people to enter the public ID and that's something they'd manually create? That's, uh, that's correct. Um, if we head back to Blender, um, this is the public ID field that they can um, define. And if they weren't to put anything in that field and click upload, would Cloudinary just assign them a random uh, 20 character public ID? Or have you tried that? Or have you always put in? A, have you always <laughs> um, put I in? always I always put in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. I mean, unless you've required it, I my guess would be that you would get a random public ID. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Just to guess. Yeah. We, can, we can test that later. <laughs> we'll test we can that test it later. <laughs> But the good thing is that it, it, like, because you are defining the public ID, and as we've showed, that's essentially what we use as the file name for when we are doing some form of web delivery to it. You can make it whatever you need it to be. And also, you can always change it later, too. But if you're saying just for the upload process. So Jen, to your point, like if we did randomize, you're like, oops, I forgot that field, then you can always go back and fix it later on. So um, th that's great. This is really, really great. So looking at this. Is there anything that's also that we haven't touched upon? Like we were saying like, oh, I forgot to mention about this aspect of it or that aspect of it. Yeah, I guess uh, being a dev support, um, I, um, the one of the reasons why I gravitated towards the GLTF format is that um, if we can uh, go to the file system and um, Go to the Chuck Taylor uh, dev jam. Okay. And, and list the files. Uh, we can see that there are three files. Um, so we do have the materials files. That will be the what we can see, basically, uh, the, the skin uh, or the texture of the 3D. Mm -hmm. uh, the GLTF file, actually, it's just a simple um, uh, JSON uh, file, you can see. Um, you know, we can we can basically interrogate like what is this three D model is using as a material, right? We can see that it's actually defined just a text. So, and is uh, the ability to inspect this JSON file the reason why you gravitated toward a GLTF file instead of a GLB binary file? Um, yes, uh, that's, uh, that's as simple as that. It's just because um, I can interrogate more and I can readily understand in plain English um, what consists of the 3D object. Yeah, and I think it's super interesting if you pop open one of these files to look at the, the skin or the layers in the two-dimensional view, I think it's super interesting. I haven't worked with 3D that much and I've enjoyed getting to see this aspect of it. So these three files that we just saw in Anthony's terminal, now we have it in his finder. And wow, that's that's crazy. It, it kind of blows <laughs> my mind that, that, that that's the file that creates this awesome 3D object that we've been looking at for this episode. Yeah, correct. Um, so I, I don't know how the 3D <laughs> model or application does it, but I know it works. <laughs> yeah, really cool. Yeah. That is awesome. That is very, very awesome. And of course, the final output for this thing is that we, you've built this amazing exporter to be able to link Blender and Cloudinary together. But the nice thing that you've also done, 
at least I think it's nice, is that people can access this today, where I know yeah. that you have this available inside of the Blender market. So that way people can go ahead and easily add it on to their Blender instance and start using it. I think you only have it as like a dollar purchase. So hopefully it makes me a little bit of money along the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, because of the type of account that I have in, um, in uh, Blender Market, um, I wasn't allowed to uh, uh, publish it as zero dollar. Um, you had to put I, a certain amount. Yeah, I had to put a certain amount at yeah. the minimum. Um, but I, do, I did link the, uh, the, my GitHub repo uh, they can download this uh, uh, this repo and then load it from uh, the preference add-on to the Blender. For That's free. perfect. And and look at that. You have offer something for free. In my opinion, people should be able to pay a little bit of money for it. Buy, buy Anthony a coffee. <laughs> but, um, you know, but I'll show it real fast so, so you guys can see it in the, in the marketplace here. But So this is the so Blender market, the indie market for Blender creators. And this is the overall exporter that we have here that... If you want to be able to download this and use this right away. Similarly, if you want to just be able to grab everything from the GitHub repo, that's available for you as well. And one thing that I like that you also did here was that you have a link to a code sandbox that also shows off the 3D modeling that we have within the product gallery as well. Oh, yeah. So this is be able to explain all those details on how you can have a workable 3D thing where you can move it around, you can tweak it, all the things that you want to be able to do to the 3D model, but within Cloudinary's product gallery. So lots of really cool things you yeah. provide here, Anthony. Thank you. Yeah. So Anthony, I had a question for you. We know why you built this and we know what pain points it addressed, but what was this, is this part of your typical work at Cloudinary or were you encouraged to do this by your team or is this something you did outside of work or um, was, was this just something you had the freedom to do as a dev support engineer at Cloudinary? Um, partly because I do have a freedom to explore um, uh, different ways of creating tools. Um, but uh, I, I see more and more um, enterprise, uh, really large brand enterprise, that they, they are looking into um, how would they have uh, 3D objects in their, um, in their e-commerce store. So um, I think it's a little bit about that, you know, I think we need to, um, you know, uh, have some sort of a tool to uh, aid or cater um, our 3D uh, artist. Yeah, uh, no, for sure. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And I, I just was impressed that this is something that you can do at Cloudinary as part of your job that might not have been in your job description when you first applied to Cloudinary. You might not have known that you'd be making something like this. And it makes me excited to hear about what you might make in the future or what other people on your team might make in the future as a part of their work at Cloudinary. Yeah, uh, I mean, many of many of our, our colleagues here at Cloudinary, they build tools. So they we, we do have the media inspector and I'm just one of the guys that, you know, uh, inspired by them. So. So it's Absolutely. really cool, yeah. And I know we have hackathons all the time at Cloudinary and there's there's always a lot of innovation happening. So this seems like something that maybe could have come out of a hackathon or or could have just been <laughs> a project you were doing outside, but this is yeah. really awesome. What a great way yeah. to help people. Cool. I love it, I love it. So Anthony, this has been wonderful to have you here. And I think it's great that we're able to be able to have this conversation to show these great links. And I think, Jen, you said it well. I, hopefully this is not the last time that we have Anthony on the program to be able to talk about the great work that he's doing and the great work that our developer support engineers are doing as well. So keep up the great work, man. Oh, thank you. Excellent. So Jen, what's your big takeaway from this? What, 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 what stood out to you about what Anthony's gone and done? I think kind of just what I said that that he was able to make this on on probably company time is just really cool and inspiring to me. Like when I, I when I found out that he made this, I, I had no idea, you know, I and I was um, uh, I was just really happy that that kind of work can happen at Cloudinary. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I mean, I think we kind of talked about a lot of the takeaways. Um, what about you? I, to me, I, I think the thing that stood out for is, is exactly what Anthony was saying about enterprise moving more and more into yes. the overall 3D space. We're seeing so many customers, big and small, 
coming to us and saying, how do I work with 3D objects or how do I incorporate that into my e-commerce or into being able to show what this looks like within a certain room that with overlays, like whatever it happens to be. And it's where there's probably a community of hundreds of thousands of 3D artists that are out there that are using Blender. So it's where we've, we have this now very clear path to say, if you need to be able to deliver this for web, we are seeing you and hearing you. And I think Anthony has really become the person to extend that branch to that community. So I, I'm very, very excited by the work he's done. I don't think anybody maybe even realizes how powerful the work that you do is until it's done. But um, there, there's a lot of power in what Anthony's created here today. Yeah. And when you think about it, 3D is so important as we move to um, online purchasing, you really need to be able to see a product at, at this point, a, a two dimensional photo of, of a shoe. I'm not going to know what that looks like. like I want to see every angle. I want to see the inside. I want to see the bottom. I, and with 3D, I think companies can um, have a better, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm sure there, there are major statistics about 3D and how that affects uh, overall success of um, online and e-commerce, but I, I think it's going to be something where going forward, we we don't. Um, <laughs> what am I trying to say? We always see 3D. Like it's be, it, it's going to become the standard, and um, I think there's been a lot of innovation in the space in the last few years, as Anthony was saying. So I think we'll be seeing a lot more of this, and especially at Cloudinary. Yeah, and I think you it, encapsulated the buyer persona pretty well. Is that there's an expectation now where yeah. you're not just showing me an image of something, you know, maybe on a a model or in a nicely set studio, and maybe a video of some people using it. People want to be able to really see all of the angles for it, it as we showed with the converse being able to see exactly what it would look like if i was able to flip it around and look at the sole and see how it looks from a turn angle to see what it would look like on your feet basically it's, <laughs> it's where there's a, there's a lot of benefits of being able to show something in a 3d space and i think brands developers many mm -hmm. people that are tied to websites and mobile apps they're starting to understand that power very very well yeah, the importance and and how it can be tied to revenue, the ability to zoom in on the stitching of the converse could be all someone needed to click the purchase button. So absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So one thing that I do want to show you here. So as we've talked about with Anthony, that Cloudinary does work with 3D models very well. And one thing that we alluded to is that there's many different file types. Of course, the one that we focused on in this episode is the GLTF format. And when you take a look at this, you'll see that there's lots of different ways that you can play with this, see the different types of angling, different types of effects you can apply. And our documentation team has even gone and created this nice little interactive demo that allows for you to go and play with the camera positioning of any particular 3D file, capture the shot, and then be able to see exactly what that would look like for getting camera angles of some of the stills that you can have within the 3D space. So definitely something that you want to play with. Of course, we'll have these in the show notes as well. And as we said at the very beginning of this overall episode, make sure you're checking out Dead Jams in some of the past episodes that we've had. So all of those are going to be available at plinary.com slash podcasts. Of course, also where you probably enjoy listening to podcasts as well, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and other well-known places. On top of all of this, make sure that you are checking out our Cloudinary community. That's going to be at community.cloudinary.com. And that's where you can see we can have conversations with other Cloudinary users about images, videos, 3D, and other things that are essentially affecting the way that digital media, visual media is being consumed on the web, mobile, and other places. So, Jen, final thoughts, anything else before we let our audience enjoy the rest of their day? No, just thanks for joining us. And this was a lot of fun. And Anthony, keep up the awesome work. I can't wait to have you on Dev Jams again in the future. Absolutely. Well, on behalf of everybody at Cloudinary, of course, from all of us that are working on this program, thank you for listening to Dev Jams. And we hope to have you back to hear some more inspiring, innovative, and interesting conversations with developers that are pushing the boundaries of what digital media and visual media is today. Take care. We'll see you soon.